if you've connected to the internet this week and if you haven't we need to have a conversation about how you got that superpower you might have heard that meta just released its latest app called threads and whilst it's a good guess no it's not the thread by which mark zuckerberg's last point of popularity hangs something else it's a new short form text social media app just like twitter in fact a lot like twitter and i mean a lot lot if you're still trying to find someone to explain to you in a simple easy to understand manner what this is why they have launched it and why you should join then i'm akshay going kind you're in the right place and by the way i've just hit 100 subscribers after tons of hard work but as you might imagine i'd love to add some more to that number and in case you like this video a sub to the channel would be much appreciated right oh so for the background as all of you know twitter has been the dominant short form text based social media app for almost two decades in fact it was first started by jack dorsey in 2006 in 2022 it was closing in an almost 4 Hundred active users per month, with well above four billion in revenues, largely coming from advertising. In October of 2022, though, it was taken private in a buyout by Elon Musk, that I'm sure you might have heard about, uh, where he roughly spent 44 billion dollars to make that purchase, which of course is a totally normal amount of money to spend just because they were nice to you when you gave them suggestions. Since then, Twitter has been sinking in more ways than one. Since Elon Musk bought the platform last October for a whopping 44 billion, they fired about 80. 80% of their employees ad sales are down about 30% compared to last year and the user base is dropping fast even accounting for the bot cleanup that they're doing one estimate by a financial services firm called fidelity said that this had wiped out about 2/3 of twitter's enterprise value though of course uh, it's privately owned now so we'll never really know but losing 30 billion of value in 6 months is hardly cause for celebration so no richard branson turns out the fastest way for a billionaire to lose money and become a millionaire might just be to buy a social media company and not start an airline on top of all of this twitter has also further created havoc by introducing paid blue ticks which allow anyone to get verified leading to a complete loss in meaning of the word verification for example uh, this parody account of elon musk is now a verified account and now on the 1st of july 2023 it introduced a paywall for users to pay to read more than a certain number of tweets leading to mass outrage in the backdrop of all this carnage Many smaller apps like Mastodon tried to take advantage of Twitter's position but missed the one secret ingredient that makes a social media network successful the feeling that everyone you know is already there or in more technical terms a critical mass of users to create a network effect you aren't going to join a twitter competitor if it doesn't have the influencers the celebrities and the friends that you want to follow and given that these people tend to come when the user base is large it creates a chicken and egg situation where one needs the other and hence neither can exist this is important to understand as the context to the launch of meta's app threads as if sent by the social media gods themselves meta chose this moment to launch threads which has since then seen over 70 million signups in less than 2 days which is almost a fifth of twitter's user base almost instantly and it's growing so fast by comparison some of twitter's other competitors like mastodon had barely 1 or 2 million users in over 1 year 70 million safe to say that threads have got a critical mass like no one else could dream of and this is only the start but the question is why why has it been so successful what does that mean for twitter and why should you care Let's answer each of those. First, why has it been so successful? I cover this in another detailed video which I'll leave a link to up here, but essentially it's due to several secret ingredients that Meta has cleverly put into the mix. The sign up process for Threads is based on your Instagram account, and given that almost 90% of Twitter users have an Instagram account, it makes for a relatively frictionless move. Next, when you sign up for Threads, you'll notice that you already follow everyone you follow on Instagram by default. This has given creators a massive incentive to sign up as soon as they can because once they do their followers will follow them by default whenever they sign up versus having to painfully rebuild the followership numbers one by one in fact when you sign up to threads you can even preemptively follow instagram users that haven't even signed up yet it's one deft arrogant yet brilliant move meta is basically telling you go on then follow whoever you want even if they aren't here it's only a matter of time they have to join man this is got to be the coolest that anything facebook related has felt in more than a decade what's more they've made sure that the incentivized creators post exclusive content on threads for a while and promised users that they wouldn't add ads uh, or ask for any money until they reach at least a billion users the user base 
they were targeting were already frustrated Twitter users who had first got to contend with having to pay for their verified status or the blue tick that you uh, see next to some names and then also having to go against a paywall to actually read tweets. So for the first time in more than a decade, a Facebook or a Meta product is now feeling like this warm, fuzzy, safe space. Meta and Mark Zuckerberg feeling warm, fuzzy and popular? Wow, there's something that most of the tech world would have laughed at just a few months ago. By the way, don't miss that 1 billion user number I just talked about. That is insane. That is more than double the user base that Twitter has built in over 17 years. Meta is basically saying with all the nonchalance uh, of a bull in a china shop that we expect to get to double your size before we even need to bother about making any money of this thing. Jeez, this is tech trash talk at its subtextual and subliminal best. Okay, so they were in the right place at the right time. They got the features right and managed to get all the creators and influenced on it pretty quickly, avoiding that chicken and egg problem we talked about. And finally, they've kept it free and user friendly to position it right. By the way, going forward, they'll probably leverage the platform effect of having more access to data from their several billion users to make it easier for advertisers, creators, and users to be on the platform, making it even harder for Twitter to compete. Which brings us to the second question. What does this mean for Twitter? Well, in the short term, I think it's gonna mean a declining user base, a declining engagement from the users that are actually there, and even lower advertising revenue. They do have a few trump cards in the pack which they can play to try and make a resurgence in the midterm though. For starters, the algorithm is designed around news and trending topics which Threads uh, isn't at the moment. Second, they actually have access to the user countries where they're allowed to operate, unlike Threads which has been banned. And it's probably fair for a regulatory body or a government in the EU to ask, hey Threads, why do you need all our health and financial data to decide if I can post text on your app? And that's a discussion for another video. And finally, Twitter still has a loyal user base, including influencers who've painfully built up follower bases over the years and wouldn't want to lose that, and a user base that used to be very, very highly engaged and loyal. We can all only hope that they play to these advantages and throw down the gauntlet to threads rather than continuing on this path to self-destruction that they seem to be on. And then finally, the third question, why should you care? Well, that kind of depends on who you are. If you're a creator, you should care because the faster you sign up, the less work you'll have to do to get followers. Since everyone who follows you on Instagram uh, and joins threads uh, after you will automatically follow you. And given the fate of Twitter is unclear, you don't have a choice but to take the plunge with threads. If you are a user though, you should care because there's a good chance in a few years, there may not be a Twitter. Though I do wish for the contrary. And it's a good time to try this app out to see if it suits your interest. At the same time, you should also care because in using this app, you're further strengthening the control that Meta has over a very large user base already. Even more data, even more engagement, and even more value. Given the extent of the data the app makes you agree to share, as a user, you should always review this carefully and decide if it meets with your approval. And finally, you should care because hopefully, if they have any sense Twitter might try and fix our beloved app and stop trying to charge for social media, improve the user, creator and advertiser experience like it's supposed to be. It's hard to predict what will happen, but I can say with confidence that we have a good fight on our hands. In fact, we quite literally have a fight on our hands. Musk has challenged Mark Zuckerberg to a cage fight. More on that in a video I'll leave a link to up here and down below. I hope that this leads to better features and lower costs for users that competition typically trends to bring. But for now, to borrow my favorite line from Mr. Who's the Boss, Twitter has finally meta-earned its match. Damn, there's really no way to make that not sound lame. Please do subscribe if you like this video and why not watch my detailed video on why threads will probably be a huge success and also my video on how social media is not actually free but it costs you so much you just didn't know. See you there.